Hello, I'm Joel Deering with the International Volleyball Hall of Fame. We're speaking one-on-one -on -one today with members of the induction class for 2014. This is Volleyball in Perspective. I'm joined by Nalbert Bittencourt of Brazil, and we're also joined by our interpreter. Nalbert, welcome. Thank you very much. You are being inducted for a remarkable playing career. You were considered to be equally skilled as a passer, defender, and attacker. You were part of Brazil's triple crown of gold medals in winning the 2002 FIVB World Championship, the 2003 FIVB World Cup, and the 2004 Olympic Games. You came to be known as the eternal captain for your <laughs> inspirational leadership, and you were selected in 2002 as Brazil's Sportsman of the Year. You competed from 1984 to 2009, and by winning the FIVB Youth World Championship in 1991, following that feat with a first place finish at the FIVB Junior World Championships in 1993, and then later winning that FIVB World Championship in 2002, you were the first player in the world to be a youth, junior, and senior world champion. So let's start here. Could you share with us a few memories of your first experiences in sport, including when you first started playing volleyball? Yes, I remember very well. In the beginning of the 80s, when volleyball became very popular in my country, in Brazil, uh, I started to play. Uh, in that moment, we had a very good national team. Uh, Bernard, William, Chandor, Renan, very exceptional players and they uh, came to Los Angeles they won the silver medal they lost against USA mm -hmm. they won the gold medal after that uh, volleyball became a passion in my country and I was a young boy uh, 10 years old 11 years old I started to play and I for the, the next 27 years oh, wow. Every day I was playing, so it became a passion to me, and it's, it's still a, 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 a big passion. How big is your family, and did you get some of your athletic ability from your parents? No, <laughs> no, I was the first one uh, in my in my family to to become a, to become a professional player. My mother is not very tall. My my father was not very tall, the same. But my sister, my old, older sister. She, she's very tall, my younger, all the three uh, sons, the, all the three, uh, my, my brother and my sister, we are tall and we started to play, uh, but in professional way, just me. My sister became a denti dentist, my brother an engineer, and I'm the only crazy of the family <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to go into professional career and you know hi the history. The history. <laughs> you mentioned some great players from Brazil. Did you have a particular person that was your hero or someone you really looked up to? Look, when I, uh, before playing volleyball, my big hero in sports in Brazil was Zico. Do you know Zico? Mm. He's a very famous soccer player. Uh, he played uh, for Flamengo. Flamengo is my uh, soccer team and he was my my idol and became more idol when I know him because he's a very uh, he used to be a very good player but a, a very special man a very special human being uh, after that the the silver generation in Brazil is called Bernard Renan Bernard Renan especially they were my my heroes my my idols mm. I like it a lot the way that they played. But one player uh, especially became my big idol. He's not Brazilian, he's American. Karch <laughs> 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 Kiraly, I, I, I think he is the, 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 the biggest player ever, the best player ever. And I tried to, to play in the same way, the same. Uh, the, the, the same abilities I, I try mm. to, to practice and I try to be cart. <laughs> wow. Well, we, before we get to your indoor history, you did play some beach volleyball. So what were the big differences, do you think, between those uh, two sports? There are two different, uh, two different sports, mm. two different situations. 
before starting my national team career. I played some tournaments, beach volleyball, but in that period it was a, a young sport. It was not very professional and my, my dream was playing in the national team. But that, uh, that situation of playing beach volleyball, I liked it a lot. And after 15 years playing the national team, I decided to, to, to play a, uh, beach volleyball. And I saw that uh, after 15 years, the sport uh, grew a lot. Mm. So many, many good players. And it's a very, very difficult sport. And you know, uh, Karch is the only one that uh, won the, f the, the medal, the gold medal in indoor, the gold medal in beach volleyball. I tried to do the same, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I always say that, okay, the indoor part, it was done. The beach volleyball part, it's missing maybe w more than 140 tournaments. Maybe in the next life. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. <laughs> You, uh, you started with the national team, the senior national team, at the age of 19. What do you believe your greatest strengths were as a player and as a competitor? Look, I, I've never been the, the tallest player, the, the player that jumped more, uh, but I always knew that I would, I would be... Uh, I, I had good abilities to be a, 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 out, a good outside hitter because I was a good receiver, a good uh, digger, mm. uh, good abilities on attack. I, I try to be the most complete player uh, as possible. So it was my, my challenge and I try to, to, to do every day. I try to practice every day to be a complete player. I've seen that written about you many times, so I think you certainly achieved that. So, was there a greatest moment for you in sport when you have to choose from so many championships mm. and gold medals? I have to think because I played in the national team 418 times, so <laughs> many, many matches. Uh, but I, I, I choose three moments, three moments. First, one world grand champion, Cup in 1997 when we won the gold medal. It was my first uh, important gold medal in senior national team. Mm -hmm. And it was my first competition as the captain of the national team. I was uh, 20 years, uh, 23 years old, a young, wow. <laughs> young captain. And in that competition, we won the gold medal. I was MVP, I was uh, the best receiver and the, the best scorer. So, was really special. <laughs> wow. After that, in 2002, the, the men's world uh, championship, it was the first time that Brazil won the world championship. And in that moment, I became the first player in world to, to win gold medals in three different categories in, in world mm. championship. It was a record, it was very special mm. to me. And the, the most important victory is always the gold medal, the Olympic gold medal in Athens. And for me, it was a, a very special uh, moment because some months before, I had a serious injury in my, on my shoulder and there was a risk of not going to, to, to the Olympics. And I had to put all my energy on that recovering and after five difficult uh, months, I was able to, wow. to go and I was able to be part of that historic mm. moment. Yeah, you were more than part of it. I went back and looked at some video and there was that early pool play match that had quite a long fifth set. What, what was that final score against Italy? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yes, I remember because after more than five months, it was my first match, and on the fourth set, Bernardinho, the coach, called me to go to, to play, and we were losing the fourth, fourth set. At the end, the, 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 the match, we had to, 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 to play the fifth set, 
the fifth set was 33, 31. And Italy, they were trying to beat us mm. in the last uh, three years or two or three years. Always they, they are trying to beat us, to beat us. And it was the first opportunity that they had mm. to beat us. And that victory was very, uh, very important mentally for the to continue strong in that mm -hmm. Olympic uh, Olympics history. Without a doubt. Now the eternal captain is an amazing compliment and one that really can only be earned from someone who sets a great example for others to follow. Did you see yourself as a leader on the court? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did that look like? <laughs> I, I was a player I use it to play always with a lot of energy, but not uh, just during the match, the matches, during the practice. Every day I try to to put all my energy more than a hundred percent every day, and that's the reason that the the, the coach Hadamez Latari in 1997, I think, he chose me as a captain because of that. And when you get more experience, when you uh, understand very well the game, mm. you can be a leader. So if you have energy, if you understand mm. the game, if you know the teammates, you can be a leader. I, I try to, to be a leader every day, not just in the matches, but every day. It's very important. Mm. You've mentioned a couple of competitors. If you had to pick a handful, that you played against all different countries in so many championship matches. Who are the first few that come to mind aside from Karch that were the toughest for you to play against and provided the biggest challenge on the other side of the net? The, the, most, uh, the most important uh, player? I didn't understand. The, so. On the other teams that you played against, who were the, some of the toughest players that oh, the to toughest compete player. against? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> I played against. So many great players. I remember in the, when I arrived, when I was selected the first time in senior national team, that was Italy. They was very, very strong. They, they are considered the, the team of the century, mm -hmm. the last century. I played against Gianni. I played against Bernardi. Uh, there was Netherlands. That Hoop Alberta was the coach. Hans Werfer, Peter Blanger, uh, Bas van der Goor, they were very special players. But after that, uh, Russians always, they have always uh, strong players. I remember Sergei Tetsukin, everybody in the world uh, admires a lot Sergei Tetsukin, Samuel Papi, uh, Goran Vujovic. <laughs> this player, <laughs> outside hitters, they are, they, are, they are very, very strong players on receiving and the same role as me. So, uh, volleyball is a team sport and I don't remember just one player. Mm. There are a lot of good players that sure. I played against. What was the key to such a lengthy career? You know, you mentioned the injury, but what was the key to be able to compete for so long in such a physically demanding sport? It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy because it's a high level sport. We have to go to our limit every day. I try to be uh, a good competitor. Uh, I, would, I try to be uh, the best as I can every day on practice. I try to be the most completed player as I could, that was the that was the key, and unfortunately, I, I had to I had uh, many serious injuries during the career. But these injuries made me stronger here mentally. I think uh, I saw many many players uh, uh, playing as phenomenal one time, two times, but playing a consistent career of 10 mm. years or 15 years, not easy. It's a question of mm. mind, a question, a, a mental question. So I try to be uh, strong mentally. Uh, that's great advice for players who might be watching this interview. 
and, uh, and aspire to have a career like you did. So you obviously have a lot of fans in Brazil. Yes. Would you like to say something to them in Portuguese? And, oh, yes. Uh, and, and, it's easier for me. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe give them some messages for the support they gave you for so many years. Okay, okay. Where, where can I? You can look right into the camera. Here, here. Okay. Bom, gostaria de mandar um grande abraço para todos os brasileiros, todos os fãs brasileiros, todos aqueles que estiveram ao meu lado durante toda a carreira. Foi uma carreira especial, mas vocês fazem parte desse momento. É um momento histórico, é um momento único na minha vida, na minha carreira. Está aqui no hall da fama do voleibol mundial, uh, eu olho para trás e, e penso né, em tudo que eu passei, tudo quanto foi difícil, mas que tudo valeu a pena e vocês são parte disso. Um beijo grande, obrigado por tudo. So give, wanna... us a, give us a short version. <laughs> okay. Well, I told that uh, Brazilian fans, they always gave a big support mm. for me. They were always very special uh, in good moments, in bad moments. They were always uh, close to me, and if I am here in the Volleyball Hall of Fame, it's a great honor to me. They made part. They, mm. they make part of it. They have to uh, to know that they were very important to me mm. during the career. That's a great message. Mm. Just a few more questions. You also played extensively on your own club internationally. Tell us a little bit about some of those experiences. Uh, there were uh, very important experiences for me because the first uh, international experience on club it was in Italy and in that moment in the beginning of the was 1999 when I was when I signed my contract with Mascherata in Italy the Italian league was very very strong very all the best players in the world was playing there were playing there and for me it was a the next step i i i played in a better uh, level i i became another player mm -hmm. when i played in italy because i uh, all the matches were difficult matches and i had to put all the energy in all the matches it was different in brazil in brazil there were two or three good clubs, and the other clubs were not so strong. But in Italy, uh, all, all the, the, the technical level of the players of the clubs made me another player, made me. Mm. So it really brought the best out in you. It really brought the best of you. Yes. And helped yes, you improve. it's true. Two more questions. Biggest changes in the sport since you stopped playing? Anything that comes to mind when you look at volleyball today, um, any big changes that you notice? During the career, uh, volleyball is a sport uh, that cha is changing a lot. The FIVB, they are trying to, to put the sport more dynamic. And I remember when I uh, started to play, the, the ball was white. Now the ball is yeah. <laughs> has colors. And the net, you, you couldn't uh, touch the net. The ball couldn't uh, touch the net when you were serving, and there was no libero. <laughs> a lot of difference. That, yeah. So it's another volleyball, and you have to adapt. 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 Yeah. You adapt the, all the situations because uh, if you don't, uh, if if you don't play a modern volleyball, the opponents beat you. Well, you certainly adapted throughout your career. <laughs> so the final question is, what does it mean and how do you feel about being inducted into the International Volleyball Hall of Fame? What should I, what should I say? It's a great honor. It was a surprise for me. I was, I was not expecting. Uh, I, I retired on four years ago and, and was not, I was not expecting, but it was a big surprise, a, a good surprise. I'm very happy, I'm very proud to be here, and I look all my volleyball career, all my volleyball history, and I'm, I feel really happy, really happy with everything, and I'm very, uh, I, I, wanna, I wanna have fun these special days, and I'd like to, to say thank you 
for everybody, for the Volleyball Hall of Fame and all the, the persons, all the people that voted on me. So mm -hmm. it's an honor. Well, congratulations on this honor. We've been speaking with International Volleyball Hall of Fame Class of 2014 honoree, Albert Bittencourt. This is Volleyball in Perspective, and I'm your host, Joel Daring. Thank you for watching.